Today's video is going to be about the transformation of this lake from a bluish green color to a muddy brown and tan color. And it's all because they had to drain the Alamo Lake in order to perform some maintenance on it so that it, I'm assuming so it wouldn't break if it got flooded, which they're anticipating. However, the impact of that decision on this lake is tremendous. On March 20th, they opened the Alamo Dam and they released initially mud because that's what happens when you open a dam that hasn't been opened since the 90s. A lot of mud. And the amount of liquid they were releasing was up to 500 cubic feet a second. And so the water level has raised here, which is a good thing, but all that mud has turned this lake at least this southern section of the lake and the Bill Williams River into a muddy mess. of engineers opened up the floodgates of the Alamo Dam, pouring out initially mud and silt, which is what we're seeing here, and what you'll see in the videos. They released 500 cubic feet per second, and for the most part flooded the Bill Williams River, which you will also see as I took a drone up there and Buddy the Drone filmed some of the area. The impact has been tremendous on the lower Lake Havasu as it has driven almost all the striper and a lot of the bass out of here. Now, the state of Arizona tried to file a restraining order to postpone this because of uh, some spawning fish, the bass and possibly the crappie were going to be spawning at that time. However, the Corps of Engineers uh, fought it and a federal judge ruled that the Corps of Engineers could go ahead and drop it this time, regardless of the 
uh, implication of what will happen to the fish in, in the Alamo Lake. Now, they, as I said, they dropped 500 cubic feet per second initially starting on March 20th. And we're going to reduce it down to 50 cubic feet per second as time went on. And the water has cleared up uh, considerably since, since this lake turned into a mud swamp. But it still has a long way to go. And uh, the fishermen are telling me that it is greatly impacted the fish especially the striper and the bass uh, the catfish are still around obviously they like mud um, some tilapia are, have been caught uh, but for the most part the fishing is now terrible as well as the birds. They, this, this lake used to be birds everywhere. And right now, birds are far and few between. Uh, I mean, honestly, why do they want to float in mud? There still are nesting birds in the reeds because I heard them last night when I was out there. Uh, in a boat fishing, but the impact has been more severe than I think they anticipated. Okay, so let me take you out to the Bill Williams River so you can see some of Buddy's footage as he flies over and the flooding, especially in that critical area because there's a burn area there and there's been some transplants. Unfortunately, the transplants, as you'll see, has survived. But fact is, that changed the landscape of the Bill Williams River, which is not uncommon when we have a flooded area, especially in the desert.
Okay, we do not know the total implications of what has transpired here in this lake and the Bill Williams River. And in the years to come, we will find out, as I do believe that it will change the landscape of at least the Bill Williams River. And we're left to wonder, would there have been a better way of doing this? Or an even better time to do this? Time will tell.